What is up YouTube? Welcome to a Mali Sib overview. In this guide, we're going to be covering all the unique features and unit types that they have, as well as covering a basic build order opening. So first things first, in the Dark Age, the, the most unique thing about the Malis, and it's kind of similar to how the Mongols work, is they get access to what's called a pit mine. And you can put this pit mine on a gold mine, and it's going to passively generate uh, 30, uh, 30 gold per minute. And on top of this, if you build houses around this pit mine, you're going to generate an extra 25% for each house. So one thing, keep in mind, one thing you want to be conscious of when you're doing this in your own games, do you want to leave enough space for a mining camp here? Because you are, you still have the capability of mining out the gold. As you can see, this passive gold doesn't actually take away from the gold vein itself. So once you've actually set up all the houses around, you still get to collect the full 4,000 gold. And off the back of this, once you completely mine out this gold vein, you still get the passive gold from the, the pit mine here. So something to keep in mind. Um, that's the biggest kind of thing that you have available in the Dark Age. Um, now, we're going to take a look at the feudal landmarks here. Uh, in the, the most common one to pick is the Manta Quarry. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing this wrong. I'm going to do my best with this, but it's not my strong suit. Um, and this generates 75 gold per minute. Um, and it can be toggled between stone and gold. Now, a popular strategy that comes off the back of this Manta Quarry is that you can toggle this to stone, gather the 400 wood you would be getting for a town center, and once you hit that 300 stone threshold, you can build that second DC right off the back of that. So you're only you kind of only investing 400 wood into a TC. Also, your opponent won't know if you're going for that TC until they see it's being built or see that it is built. Um, so it's kind of like the Rus where they can trade their Golden Gate tickets for a second TC. But in this particular situation, um, it's going to be a passive uh, resource rather than just trading outright. So the other option as well was the Sahara Saharan Trade Network. Um, and this kind of leads on to the other point as well that's unique to the Malians is if you see here, they've got towers, it just looks like a normal tower. But instead, if you're trading past this tower network, it's actually going to be dropping off extra gold each time you pass this tower. So this tower is going to give you an extra, I believe, 10%, an extra 10% gold each time they pass these tower. So the other age up option is basically just another big tower that already has arrow slits. Um, obviously it's a bit beefier, um, but uh, it also gives you an extra 50% uh, food dropped off in these tax towers. So if you're dropping an extra 30 tax gold on each of these towers, um, you're gonna be getting an extra 15 food on top if you build this landmark. So it's nothing crazy. Um, I personally don't really like this landmark, especially in 1v1s. I think 1v1s, you're always going to be going for the Mount Quarry. And in team games, I can see a use case for the Saharan trade network um, if you are planning on going for a boom heavy strategy. Um, while this is all going on, I'm, I'm just going to build a market down here just so uh, I can demonstrate what it looks like. But we're going to go on to the next stage and we're going to talk about another big feature that comes along with the Malians. I'm going to build a mill here. And this is probably one of my favorite strategies or to utilize with the Malians. And that's going for a cow boom, as I call it. So Malians have the ability to train cattle for 100 gold. So with all the extra passive gold you're getting, it's going to make it pretty easy for you to afford these cattle. So... These cattle spawn with 500 food and they are gatherable. And I'm going to be honest, at the time of this recording, I don't know what the gather rates are like on the cows. Maybe someone in the comments can help us out here and um, let us know what that is. Um, but basically with these cows, uh, if you put them in a cattle ranch, they're going to generate passive food income. 28 food per minute for the cattle. Um, so 
if you train three cattle, build a, a ranch, um, it's going to take around five minutes to pay off, which seems like quite a lot, but you do have a lot of passive gold already coming in. So the investment will take some time to pay off, but there is an age three landmark that makes this a lot better. So if you are going for a cow boom, it'll make it even more worth your while. Um, so I'm going to build a market down here just to show you guys what the tax outposts look like. Um, and there is a limit of cattle. It's either 20 or 21. I'm, I'm not hundred percent sure. Um, but yeah, it, it, you're basically going to be able to fill up, um, or at least, you know, you'll need seven if you want to maximize, uh, the amount of passive food income you're getting from cattle. So if you wanted to, you could swap this between gold and stone, pretty simple. Um, and when you have a pit mine with all houses, except for one mining camp around it, you're going to be getting a total of 90 gold there. So if there is another big gold vein like here, you're obviously going to be able to get a higher amount of passive gold because you're going to be able to fit more houses around it. Um, I believe if you don't have a mining camp, it's 120 passive gold that you can get from one of these big mining camps. So that's pretty solid. Um, and keep in mind, like I said before, you can still gather, um, the gold, uh, all of the gold that was, uh, inside of that gold vein beforehand. Um, cool. So that's like the main thing when it comes to, um, the unique eco side of things with the Malians. Um, let's talk about the different unit types that you have available. Um, in feudal age so every single unit is unique in it's completely different to any of the sieves that you've seen so far except for the archer the archer is the one unit that is the same but they do have unique upgrades which do make them different from all the civilizations you saw before this part and that is the that was not what i was looking for I will come back to that later, but that is an Imperial upgrade. Let's get a trade going here. I hope I built the towers in the right spot. Yeah. Okay, cool. So first unit, Archer, nothing crazy. Um, one thing to keep in mind that they do have an upgrade in the Castle Age, which makes them unique from any other Archer. Yeah, your archer is able to deal poison damage, which is an extra three damage over six seconds. And it might not sound like a lot, but this actually stacks. So if you have multiple archers shooting at one target, it's going to be able to stack all of that poison onto one, one unit. As well as um, if you're shooting multiple times, the poison will kind of build up over time. So making them pretty good against everything. Um, I like... Usually an archer wouldn't be able to do anything to a knight because they're high in armor. This poison kind of ignores that factor. Um, so it actually makes them quite a strong unit. But moving on to the next unit, Javelin Thrower. These units are really good. These are trainable in feudal, as you can see. Um, they are really good against archers. So not only are they good against archers, they're actually pretty decent against um, armored units. I believe they have um, anti-armor damage. All right, moving on to the barracks unit. So they have what is called a Donzo. It is basically a spearman for the Malians. The only difference is they do get a ranged attack. So this this ranged attack has a minimum range. So they can't use this when they're really close. They're gonna automatically switch to their spear weapons, which are good against cavalry, obviously. Um, but the range attack, you get one throw and there's 11 or 12 second cooldown on this javelin. So you can like, if you're retreating and cav are chasing you and you're within the right range, you can throw your javelin on retreat and then keep running. You do have to wait that 11, 12 seconds that you have to wait for. Um, but it's really kind of a cool feature. I, I don't know how impactful it's going to be. I've had games where I'm like retreating and I'll just like have like, 15 of these spearmen and they'll all throw their javelin and kill like one knight on the retreat which is really cool uh, making them quite strong i'd say they're better than spearmen just for that factor alone 
Um, and as you can see right there, you saw the plus 18. That was the tax being dropped off at this outpost. So they get up to five tax drop offs. This tower is out of position. I misplaced this. Um, as you can see, it's not quite going to go on the range. So you're not going to get the drop off tax here. If I built the tower here, obviously you'd get it. So with these towers, you're getting an extra um, like 50% basically on your return trip. If you have these five towers set up um, on your trade route. So it's quite good. It's buffing the gold income by 50%, assuming that you invest the 500 wood for these towers. Um, so making them a quite decent trader sieve. Um, and another, the other sieve I'll be covering is the Ottomans and they are arguably a bit better at trading and I'll cover that in a whole new video. So let's move on to the other unit types they have. Um, the Mus... Uh oh, the Musafadi warrior, Musafadi warrior. Um, these guys, they have a very unique situation in being used. And these guys are anti armor specialist. So knights, men at arms, they're good against them. I would argue that they're not like particularly strong against knights. Like a spearman would probably do a better job against a knight than what a Musaf Musafadi warrior does. They are fast though. I believe they're far I believe they have faster movement speed than the spearmen. Um, so basically use case for these is if they have a lot of men at arms or if there are a lot of men at arms mixed in with knights and whatnot, these guys are going to be a good option here to counter those out. Um, let's see. So these guys have a 1.38 and a 1.25. So they are faster than a spearman as well. So they're, at, they're going to be able to chase down men at arms as well, right? Because men at arms are quite slow. Um, the only thing is these guys aren't armored. So they will die or they get countered by archers. They're not particularly tanky either. So quite a unique niche um, use case for these guys. They can also enter stealth for 20 seconds, which is pretty cool. <laughs> um, so these guys would not be visible to the opponent. Um, and you can see the cooldown here for how long they're invisible for. Uh, as soon as a scout comes though, as that was kind of cool that that came up, um, a scout detected them. Um, so they just automatically came out of stealth mode. So a lot of opportunity for like a big surround that they, then they're, they're not tanky, right? So the use case is to be on top of their army before they realize and then fight straight away. But obviously, if your opponent is near an outpost, scout, or whatever, they're not going to be as useful there. Um, so that's all the feudal units, uh, land foot units. Next, we have the cavalry units. So these guys are quite unique in the cavalry. A sofa is basically a budget knight. They're not as high in armor um, and they're slightly cheaper. Um, they have a little bit less health than knights as well. And overall, they just... Like if you compare this unit to a French knight, they just don't feel fantastic, um, but they still have a solid use case. Like if you need to counter out archers and whatnot, they're still good against archers and things like that. Um, but they are countered by the typical spearman crossbow because they are still considered heavy, cav heavy cavalry. Um, the next one is very unique. So you have your typical scout, right? Uh, the Malians have their starting scout. Uh, they can also tra train the scout from a TC, which is slightly more expensive. And the reason is you can turn these bad boys into warrior scouts. Um, and the main difference is with these warrior scouts is they get buffed attack damage um, as well as a little bit extra health, I believe. Um, we'll see that come in soon here. 110 health and one attack. Now, okay, the health doesn't change. Uh, they just get more attack. So one sneaky trick that people have been talking about is... You start double scouts with the Malians and you're attacking their vills in transition to Feudal Age. And once you hit Feudal Age, you transform these bad boys into warrior scouts and they can start smacking away at seven damage. So if you're hitting them for one damage each time, they're like, oh, it's fine. My vills, I'll check in on them later. They upgrade to warrior scouts and suddenly three of their vills are dead. So something to keep in mind, they're still pretty squishy. They are very cheap. Uh, they only cost food as well, um, which is something that 
if you have like a cow boom going or something like that, that can be very effective in massing scouts, um, basically just tossing trash units at them. Um, so yeah, that's going to cover all the fuel units. Uh, let's move on to the castle age options. So first we're going to take a look at the landmarks. This is the cattle. This is the cattle uh, landmark I was talking about. Nearby cattle will provide an extra 20 food per minute. So that stacked on top of the uh, cattle ranch. It's going to be quite juicy in terms of a food income if you have the maximum amount of cattle. Um, another thing to keep in mind, it's around three minutes. Uh, it takes for a ranch and three cattle to pay off. So it's not too bad. Like, I mean, it's pretty rare that you're going to die within like a three minute period. But obviously you are investing in cattle rather than units and... That can be a bit more risky, depending on if your opponent is looking to punish you. Um, the other option is the Farimba Garrison. Um, this is kind of like the Burgrave. Uh, it quickly produces barracks and archery range units five at a time. Unit cost is converted to gold and reduced by 20%. So another thing they excel at is getting passive gold for free. Um, or if you're doing like a big market trade as well, boom, you can get um, a lot of gold there. And that can be transferred into the Frimberg Garrison uh, units to be created. So one typical strategy that I've seen out of the Mister, and I've been playing around with myself, is doing like a big cattle boom and taking, going up to castle and taking pretty much all your vills off of food uh, and relying on the passive food that's coming from the cattle. And then you transfer all your vills to gold and you just start pumping units out of this landmark here. So you're still going to be getting the passive gold and um, and also going to be mining as well, which means you can have a really solid timing attack, similar to what the Burgrave would be able to do, pumping out units really fast. Um, so that must, that's the main option here. Another strange tech that these guys have, which I haven't really understood why it's there or like the, the particular use case for it i guess if you're repairing a keep or something this could be useful but buildings are repaired 100 percent faster with this bunko repairs buncho repairs um yeah i haven't really used it much but it's there so there's that um now we're going to move on to the next age unit surprise surprise there's no difference so one thing about the Marlies uh, is that the units that you have available in Castle Age are not any different to what you have in Feudal. It's still all the same units, they all just have unique upgrades, right? You got the archers with the poison arrows, which will deal 3 damage um, over 6 seconds, uh, which does actually stack, so it's not um, you're not limited to one unit uh, or one uh, proc of poison being work uh, working on it. Um, so if you're having five unit, five archers shooting at one unit, that's all going to stack on top of each other, um, and deal extra poison damage. And the poison damage is going to ignore the armor of your opponent. So really impactful. You got the standard veteran upgrade for the javelin thrower. Um, same with the scout. And then the so far has a unique tech, which increases the armor by two so that it can kind of compete better with like, um, castle age knights. Same goes here, um, nothing too unique other than the veteran upgrades here. Um, but again, as you can see here, all the units costing gold. So if you are like mining a lot more gold, you don't really have to be out on the map for food because you've got cattle boom going, hypothetically anyway. Um, and you can just pump out these units. So they come out in batches of five. The, the javelin throwers are taking 30 seconds to train, which is 20 seconds for... Uh, twenty percent faster than just training five in the, the archery range. Um, you still have access to keeps and mosques and everything that all the previous civilizations had available to them. Um, but yeah. So moving on to the imperial landmarks here. This one is a big keep, um, and. Infantry units nearby the landmark can enter stealth for 10 seconds. So, um, this is going to be really good for the Musafadi Gunner, which is an Imperial Age unit, which I'll touch on a, a bit. 
Um, and the Musafari warriors, which are the anti-men at arms unit that we were talking about before. And so once they come out of the stealth and attack someone, they get extra damage being dealt. And from my understanding, uh, a Musafari warrior, um, its normal attack does... Okay, I'm not going to guess its normal attack, but basically it doubles the amount of damage on the first attack of a Musafari um, gunner. So it's an interesting landmark. Uh, I guess it, it creates a really strong hold point in the middle. Like, you, if you're if you see your opponent moving out towards your landmark and they don't see your army back here, you can literally enter stealth and do like a big ambush attack. So something to consider. Um, an interesting landmark that I haven't toyed around with too much. Um, most of my games haven't really been going imperial as of yet. So I haven't really gotten to test these out to the full extent, but one that I did actually test out was the Gr Griot Barra. <laughs> Fuck, I'm so Australian, dude. <laughs> All right. Um, you can begin a festival for 300 gold, providing global enhancements. I'm going to show you that. Yeah. Um, some pretty cool and unique options there. Um, and then I guess the main new access unit you're going to have available is going to be the Musafada Gunner. So it's kind of like um, a hand cannon um, that has the ability to go stealth. Um, and it moves quite fast as well. Um, but it is very expensive, keep in mind. Um, some of the other Imperial upgrades that we can look at here is Sofa, which is the knight or the budget knight that they have available. Um, increase the movement speed of nearby infantry by 15%. So it's pretty cool. Another, um, I, I mean, I haven't used this much, um, but an interesting tech for sure. All right. The other one is Musafari units heal while in stealth for plus two every one second. So... Not only can Musafado warriors just stealth by themselves, so if they're running um, to do like a raid, they can be healing right before they hit. Or if you went up with the other landmark, you could heal the Musafadi warriors and the Musafadi gunners um, within the range of that landmark. So now that we've aged, here are the options for different things that you have access to. Um, you have the increased military unit production speed by 50%. These all cost 300 gold. But if you have, say, like two production buildings, please don't use this. Just build an extra two production buildings on top of this. Um, you're going to get a lot more value out of that. Um, increase food gather rate by 50% for 30 seconds. And the last increase siege and torch damage for all units by 100%. So if you're massing up one, one game that I played, I massed up a bunch of scouts, went into my opponent's base and increased the siege damage. And then just siege down all these landmarks and won the game that way. So um, an interesting landmark, a bit of extra utility you have available for you. Um, but yeah. Alright, time to jump into the standard. I don't want to call it standard because I don't think it's exactly the same as what I've been seeing other people do. But it's something I've been using um, that you can... It's a slightly more greedy opening. So let's just jump on into that. Okay, so first thing we're going to do, Q bills. Put all your guys on straggler tree with the exception for one who's going to place a pit mine on the gold vein over there. So drop those initial sheep back at home, start collecting new sheep, um, and then new vills can come onto food here. Now the reason we're chopping stragglers here is one, we want to get the passive gold as soon as possible with the pit mine. Um, and also in the pup you may have noticed that the stragglers spawn a lot closer to your town center. So it makes uh, openings with chopping straggler trees a lot more viable. Um, and as soon as you get that pit mine up, you want to start building houses all around it so that you can increase the amount of passive gold that you're going to be getting. Um, so you're not going to need to mine any gold to get up to the second age. We're just going to focus on getting the wooden food for the houses around the pit mine. There is other openings where it's slightly less greedy. Um, but as soon as this tree runs out, we're going to come over to the wood line here with three bills. That's four. Oops. So once we get start getting wood income again from this lumber camp, we're going to send a new bill across to the gold vein again so we can start building more houses. 
you can see this wood is on zero. We're going to continue building the houses around. We have left room for a mining camp here on the side of our TC as well. Just keep that in mind when you're building this. We're going to leave a gap so that it's protected by the town center fire here. And we're going to bring back our sheep so we don't run out of food. I'm going to continuously build and max out the amount of um, houses. Oh, that's a bit of a mistake. Don't forget to rally your DC back to food. Last house here. I'm going to bring a guy off wood here. So we have a total on two. Of two on wood here. And then we're just going to focus on getting the food to age up here. I, I, I think I... No. This is fine. This is fine. So we have a total of seven houses around it with the slot for the mining camp here. Now, from here, this is just a general greedy opening with the Malians. Um, some people opt to go for less houses so you can get a faster age up. I like to go for the more greedier approach in Dark Age and um, delay my age up slightly. And then for the feudal... We're going to age up with the Mansa Quarry. Um, I think this is really good in giving you flexibility in toggling towards the second DC. It's something that I like to do. Um, I don't think there's much value in going for a fast castle in uh, the Marlies yet. Um, but that could change in the future. The meta will evolve and my strategies and everyone else's strategies will evolve with that too. So we want to start putting some more dudes on wood again. Um, keep in mind that once you age up, you will have access to another pit mine. So what you can do is you can start building the houses around your next gold vein that you're doing. So that once you age up, you can instantly um, get that extra maximum gold that's coming in from uh, pit mine. So you just continuously scout around on your opponent's side um, and... Get enough wood for a production building so you probably want to like you're gonna want to like open either defensive with like javelin riders or you can go for some sofa riders of your own um so that you can raid your opponent the other option is warrior scouts but i haven't played it too around too much i know there's a build going around where you rush a bunch of warrior scouts um but in this we're just covering the general opening um, and then you can be flexible from this point on. So as soon as I age up, I like to toggle this to stone um, and then play standard age two and then start working towards a second TC. I think it, uh, from memory, it takes around four minutes. Uh, let's see what the gold income is. So you're gonna need 300, uh, you're gonna need 300 uh, stone, obviously for a town center. So in what, whatever you're doing here, you can go archery, you can go stable, whatever type of unit you want to make, go for it. And you want to build the pit mine and some sort of military building. Um, we'll toggle this to stone. You'll see this start rising up a bit more in a second here. It slowly increases for some reason. I'm not sure why it just starts at the intended amount. Uh, we're going to max our houses around this. If we need to, we can always delete a house for a mining camp later on here. Um, but it's probably going to be a while before we go into this gold mine. Um, so from here, you can make whatever you want. So you're getting enough passive gold to make your gold units as well, like your javelin throwers. Um, and then once the time has kind of... You have accrued enough stone, and we're going to build a second town center. So I'm just going to fast forward to that bit um, so you can take a look. Yaru to work. 
So one thing I'm doing here is I'm going to build a mill and I'm going to build some cattle. Um, let's just say your opponent was being aggressive here um, and you weren't able to safely get the hunts. One thing that you can do is you can train cattle from a mill. So I'm putting the mill on the berries here just in case I want to gather these later on. Going for blacksmith upgrades as well. Chew. Mm. Now we have a cattle to eat. Well, Five hundred food total, which is quite a lot. And you can also go for an early wheelbarrow off the back of this as well. Well, not early, but you know, reasonably early. With the passive gold that you're getting. Added in like a stable or something. Now with the passive stone that we've been getting, soon we'll be able to afford a second TC. We'll drop that second TC down on the hunt here. Uh, so we can protect another form of food here. Makes it a lot harder to attack into this food source if you have a town center here. Quick little trick, kill the deer nearby with two bills so that you don't end up walking a ton. You can also do it with your javelin riders if your javelin, not javelin riders, your javelin throwers if they're nearby. Um, one thing I've noticed is if now deer seem to walk way close to the TC and you can't shoot them, which is a little bit annoying. But yeah, that's the build order guys. Um, two TC at around nine-ish minutes. You can be applying a lot of pressure whilst on the back of it getting ready for an eco boom without having to have a ton of dudes on stone. Um, but yeah, that's the build order guys. Hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you're enjoying the pup as much as I am. I'm having a lot of fun with the new sieves. Um, but yeah, enjoy guys. Peace out.